He was the head of the Gambino crime family. The most powerful of all the mafia families in the U.S. It was clear Gotti feared no one. But one man stood in the way of Gotti's rise. Paul Castellano. Castellano was an old-style hood, a mafioso who disguised his crimes behind a veneer of respectability. Formed in the early 20th century, the Gambino crime family is referred to as one of the five families responsible for the majority of New York's criminal activity. The story begins in New York when Salvatore Toto d'Aquila lays the groundwork for the Gambino crime family. The Gambino family has a history of racketeering, extortion, loan sharking, and illicit gambling, among other criminal activities. D'Aquila was born on November 23, 1877 in Palermo, Sicily, and rose to prominence as an influential member of the Italian-American underworld in the United States. The syndicate had not yet been established. Following D'Aquila's death, Minio assumed leadership of the D'Aquila family, which would eventually evolve into the Gambino criminal family through a series of successions. Carlo Gambino Gambino, a Sicilian native, came to the United States in 1921 as an illegal immigrant on a ship and eventually settled in Brooklyn. In a twist of fate, Gambino was barely 19 when he was ushered into the inner circle of the mafia as a made man. But what makes this tale truly intriguing is his affiliation with a daring group of young mobsters known as the Young Turks. This renegade faction led by the legendary Frank Costello and Lucky Luciano held a revolutionary vision for the American Mafia, a vision that stood in stark contrast to the old-school beliefs of their Sicilian-born Mustache Peets. In 1957, Albert Anastasia, the head of the Gambino family, became increasingly violent. To stop him, Gambino agreed to take a hit out on him. Later, Anastasia was gunned down in his barbershop. While many of the older Mafia bosses were killed or arrested, many at Gambino's order, he remained in charge for decades. Even the cops had trouble linking Gambino to any crimes. Even after placing his home under constant surveillance, the FBI wasn't able to get any evidence that Gambino was running one of the biggest crime families in the country. Gambino was a silent yet deadly man. On one occasion, Dominique Schialo, a Colombo family capo regime, got drunk at a restaurant and insulted Gambino. Gambino remained silent throughout the entire situation. Later though, Schialo's body was found buried in cement. Gambino had a knack for running a business. Gambino runs a smooth, efficient operation where everybody makes money, said one lawman who has followed the affairs of the family for six years. He stated, him and his brother Paul and Sam McCarty made over a million dollars from ration stamps during World War II. The Godfather, unlike many other Mafia leaders, died of natural causes in 1976 at home. He is remembered as one of the most powerful figures in Mafia history. Paul Castellano After Carlo Gambino's death in 1976, Paul Castellano took over the family name. Even though he was Carlo's brother-in-law, not everyone approved of how he managed the family affairs. Paul Castellano was known to be a recluse among his friends. Paul Castellano, nicknamed Big Paul due to his towering stature, acted as if he ran a Fortune 500 company rather than a criminal enterprise. Except for constructing a neo-federal mansion, which his neighbors termed the White House, he maintained such a low profile that, for a time, local and federal law enforcement agencies even debated about his age. Judge Kaufman described him as a man marked with antisocial patterns, who willingly spent one year in jail in order to not answer any questions, even though given immunity in that case. While Castellano was the boss of bosses, he was a criminal conservative who spoke out against drug dealing among crime families and abuse against women, and that sparked hatred between him and John Gotti. Still, Castellano had earned the reputation of a greedy miser among his subordinates. Starting in the 1970s, he acquired millions through legal and illegal means, but that didn't stop him from wanting more. By the early 1980s, he was putting pressure on his men by taking 15% more of their pay instead of 10%. This guy is sitting there in his silk robe and his velvet slippers in his big white house, and he's taking every dollar we got, said Ernest Volkman, author of Gangbusters. 
1985, Castellano stood trial, but he did not live to hear the verdict. On the evening of December 16, 1985, 70-year-old Castellano and his underboss, Thomas Bellotti, were on their way to Spark Steakhouse in midtown Manhattan. Three hitmen approached them and opened fire on them on the street. Six bullets were fired at each man. This grisly murder of two guys is one of the most notorious mob kills ever. John Gotti himself masterminded Paul's assassination. This murder of Paul was organized by none other than John Gotti. John Gotti, by murdering his way to the top of one of the nation's most powerful mafia families, John Gotti became a legendary figure who was admired and feared by many. He was the last of the classic gangsters, a mafia boss who violated all the rules, enjoyed the limelight, and seemed untouchable for a time. Reporter Juliette Papa described him as a thug in a great-looking suit. His $1,800 custom-tailored suits earned him the title of the Dapper Don, while his ability to evade criminal accusations earned him the name the Teflon Don. A few weeks after the death of Castellano, Gotti was chosen as the new godfather of the Gambino crime family by the majority of crew chiefs. Gotti soon reinforced his influence by operating out of the Ravenite Social Club in Manhattan and the Bergen Club in Queens. John Gotti was ruthless. J. Bruce Mao, a retired FBI agent, said, John Gotti is a stone-cold killer. He has caused the deaths of a great deal of people. He's an extremely vicious and ruthless boss. Gotti's rule came to an end due to the testimony of Sammy the Bull, Gravano, second in command in the Gambino family. For Gravano, being a gangster actually in my life was a curse, he told the FBI, and it did affect my family. When asked how many people he had killed, Gravano said, roughly 18, I would say 18. Could there be one more or less? And all that was done on the order of Gotti. On April 2, 1992, a jury found John Gotti guilty on five counts of murder. He received a life sentence with no chance of release. So for a couple of days, you sit down there. Well, when he just walked in the door, when he arrived down there, it was like, I don't know, the, the, the biggest celebrity known to mankind walked in there. Every inmate that could see him or hear him or knew that he could hear them pledged that they would do anything that he wanted. Uh, do you need anything? Anything that I have, you can have. That was pretty much the, the thing. From jail, Gotti appointed a committee that included his son, John Jr., to run the Gambino family. He then died in 2002 due to cancer. Frank Colley In the 2010s, Frank Colley took control of the Gambino family. Colley was known for keeping a low profile, but his homicide in 2019 brought the family's reputation back into the spotlight. Francesco Colley wore his label discreetly. Mr. Colley, rumored to be the head of the Gambino crime family, was a far cry from John J. Gotti, the showy Dapper Don who ran the same operation in the past. He was the polar opposite of John Gotti, said a mafia investigating law enforcement official. He's basically a ghost. In both his professional and personal life on Staten Island, he maintained a low profile. Despite living a low life, Callie continued the family business. He put in illegal Joker poker video machines at a Brooklyn cafe and shared the proceeds with the owners, keeping for himself the standard 10% cut for the Gambino family. In 2014, federal authorities linked Mr. Kali to a heroin trafficking enterprise that went through Italy and into the United States. In a nutshell, he was an earner, a leader who brought to the Gambino family his youthful energy and a stellar reputation for distributing cash around the tribe while skillfully avoiding the authorities' traps and wiretaps. In one intercepted conversation, two Italian-speaking mobsters discuss Mr. Colley's standing in New York. He's a friend of ours, one said. He's everything over there. Unfortunately, he was murdered in the same manner as his predecessors. Mr. Colley, 53, was shot six times outside his home in the Todd Hill neighborhood of Staten Island on March 13, 2019. Although Peter Gotti was the designated leader of the Gambino family for the past 15 years, the other major gangsters largely disregarded him. Lor Manino was the new acting boss of the Gambino family after Frank Colley. Despite being less potent and influential, the Gambino crime family continues to maintain a reputation. 
Currently, New York City and the northeastern United States are the most active regions for the Mafia. Similar to other Mafia organizations, it has been subjected to significant pressure from law enforcement, resulting in the imprisonment of key members. And that ends our series on the major crime families of MYC. Remember to subscribe because in the next series we'll be doing a deep dive into the lives of these legends of the Mafia world.